We are going to discuss the similarities and the contrast between alcohol during the Prohibitionary Era and gun control in the present day United States. Now, you need a basic understanding of the Prohibition, so put your thinking caps on. Prohibition was the banning of sale, manufacture, and transportation of alcoholic beverages between 1920 and 1933, also known as the Noble Experiment. Before the Prohibition, saloons were considered, especially by women, as a place of evil intent and evil itself. The Volstead Act, passed on October 28, 1919, clarified the law of Prohibition. It stated that any beverage over 0.5% alcohol was considered alcoholic. The act also banned the possession of any item that could be used to manufacture alcoholic beverage. Though the 18th Amendment was quite precise, it had many loopholes. One was that it did not officially outlaw the consumption of alcohol or the prescription of alcohol by a doctor. A lot of people, quote unquote, knew a good doctor. Of course, this drove the saloons underground, now called speakeasies. People would manufacture their own alcoholic beverage called moonshine or sell their pre-stored alcohol for inflated prices. A very similar situation is being introduced and has been introduced right now. With tragic mass killings by delusional young men, the mainstream media jumps on these tragic occurrences and makes themselves the experts of gun control. Laws being introduced by emotionally driven women are few and far between. Like the prohibition, in preparation for a ban, people are buying guns that may be targeted for a ban. Many gun owners are buying all they can get their hands on. A major difference between the prohibition and these gun control measures are that alcohol is now protected by our uh, constitutional rights. But also like the prohibition, people are starting to figure out how to get the things they need and want even after one of these bans should pass. Meet Corey Wilson, self-proclaimed crypto-anarchist. Cody makes his point by creating plans for downloadable firearm pieces that can be printed utilizing a 3D printer. Cody's first endeavor was designing an AR-15 low receiver, the weapon targeted by gun control advocates. This is the only regulated piece by ATF in federal commerce. This means you can purchase every other part you need to complete your AR-15 rifle through mail order. No background check no serial number. He has also created a completely printed firearm dubbed the Liberator. He does this all open source and has been attempted to be regulated by the ATF on multiple occasions. But what does all this mean? Well, it shows the similarities between the prohibition and the current anti-gun legislation because, as we know, the prohibition did not work. It failed to do everything it was designed to do. As shown by Corey Wilson, a very similar fate looms with the gun control. There will be no regulation of these firearms. Like the Clinton ban, it will just turn a $600 AR-15 rifle into a $1,600 AR-15 rifle. Also, the similarities of the situation is extremely troubling on multiple levels, as they are both emotionally driven into legislation. That's what teenagers do. Teenagers make decisions based on emotions. That's irrational. Keep irrationality out of my reg legislation. Just like last year's SOPA. That restricts our Bill of Rights. As for a solution, I would suggest a national vote on whether any legislation coincides with our Bill of Rights. As for a final thought, I'll leave you with this. Let's analyze this picture. It states at the top, one child is holding something that's banned in America to protect them. Guess which one? And at the bottom, it states that dodgeball has been banned in a lot of public schools to protect the children, while the AR-15 rifle has not. This is a complete falsehood, considering the legislation that states that all public schools shall be a gun-free zone. Therefore, completely contradicting their argument and just doesn't make any sense. Because every mass shooter has broken this law in everything they do.